Hi, so uh, I know I look like shit today, but I just woke up and my hair was... Ugh, so this is this is just kind of how it happened. Day guess fooled. Oh yeah, also, I, I read Through Darkest Europe and it was... It, it was okay. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Before I say anything else, I do want to say I really, really like the cover for this one. Because, see, you look at it, it's like this church with just a sunset going on in the background. So it has this really kind of a medieval desert-like feel to it, and I, I can't even explain exactly why. I just know, yeah, it's a cool cover and I like the way it looks. But, so this book, like I said, it was just sort of fine. You know, it had a interesting premise, I'll give it that. And the world as a whole isn't half bad either, because, you know, it's Harry Turtle Oak. Even if it's not super plausible, it is going to be interesting. And Unlike a lot of his other books, this one has more of an actual plot to follow rather than just, you know, watching the world have events happen to it and you're just seeing it through the eyes of a couple of blank slates. But the plot isn't especially good and neither are most of the characters in it. So at the end of it all, all I can really say is that, yeah, it was interesting, it was kind of cool, but it wasn't great. So the premise for the world that this book takes place in is that back in the 13th century there was a philosopher or scholar, whatever you want to call him, named Thomas Aquinas. And in real life he did produce a lot of, you know, philosophical texts and stuff, And but in this one he specifically said a lot about how uh, pursuing knowledge in the real world is useless, we just need to follow the will of God, we just need to do what he says, etc., etc. That way we can get into heaven. And as far as I can tell, he did not uh, say this in real life. That was just sort of... Mm, it Basically, it's just taking his beliefs and taking him to an extreme. And most of Europe agreed with him, so they just sort of let technological progress languish, and they just stopped caring about that. Meanwhile, there was another person who was real, an Islamic scholar named Al-Ghazali, who in real life was kind of the way Thomas Aquinas was portrayed in this book, where, like, yeah, who cares about science and all that? We're just, just do what God tells you. Whereas in this world, he actually did say, hey, pursue science, and people took him very seriously. And so as a result of all of this, the Christian world and the Islamic world sort of switched, where, and now over the course of, like, 700 years, the Islamic world has, you know, flourished. It's become, like, this liberal, tolerant paradise, super rich, great economy, all that, and apparently they were the ones that colonized the Americas at some point, whereas Europe has sort of languished and become, like, religiously extreme and backwards and poor. It fits into all the basic stereotypes about the Middle East and North Africa that exist today, and not to say those stereotypes are completely wrong, in a lot of cases they are right, but basically that's the world this takes place in. And then the two main characters are these guys named Khalid and uh, Dawood, who both come from uh, the Maghreb, which is an area in northwest Africa, like, you know, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, that, that area. Uh, actually, I kind of wish there was a map with this book, because the borders are completely different from our real world. I just kind of wish I had more of a visual to help me uh, get the idea in my head, but whatever, it's not the end of the world. And anyways, these two investigators go to Italy because the Aquinists, who, the guys that follow Thomas Aquinas and who are not very subtly compared to real-life jihadis, and anyways, uh, they're planning on attacking the Grand Duke of Italy because, oh yeah, in this world, monarchies are still the norm in both the Islamic world and the Christian world. And I actually thought that that was pretty interesting. I, I wish that they had gone into more detail about that because that's a way in which this world is different from ours, rather than just being, okay, we took these two places and switched them around. But, whatever, not the important part. The important part is, the Grand Duke's life is threatened, and so these two foreign investigators come to Italy to try and protect him. And at first, that's really, really boring. The first 60 or so pages of this book is really just Dawood and Khalid sort of walking around, talking to people, and the narrator giving exposition. That's about it. And not to say it's all bad, like the exposition is kind of interesting, and some of the conversations they have are interesting, but Khalid and Dawood just aren't interesting characters. You know, Khalid is just... He, he's an investigator, you know, he's a 
fairly nice, normal, tolerant dude, but he also sees all the violence and backwardsness of the new country that he's in, and he's like, well, we gotta, we gotta stop some of this shit. I, I really hope we can help out the people here. But he's just not that passionate about it. Yeah, that was the biggest thing about this. He, he doesn't have much passion to him. He's just sort of doing his job for the most part. And so he wasn't an interesting character. He never, he never stuck with me. And his friend Dawood is basically the same, only he's a little bit more of a smartass and he's Jewish. So, n and n neither of them stuck with me, and the rest of the cast is just even more bland, honestly. And I'm not gonna say that all of Harry Turtlelove's characters have been great. A lot of them have been blank slates, but they've been such large casts in most of his books that it hasn't mattered. Like, this one is making me think more of Super Volcano, where he had a small cast of characters, but they were all assholes, and so I hated all of them. As opposed to things like The Great War, which has a huge cast of characters, and I don't really remember any of them, but it didn't matter because they were just the eyes through which we saw the world. However, once you get around 60 or 70 pages in, and minor spoiler here, the Grand Duke of Italy gets assassinated by Aquinists, and then so his son takes over, and the Aquinas keep blowing shit up, and it just turns into a full-blown civil war in Italy. And at that point, things get a lot better, because even though there's still a lot of, you know, conversations, and there's a lot of focus on Khalid and Dawood, who just aren't that interesting, we're actually seeing how the world is changing, and we're seeing how things could go differently, and we, like, we don't want the Aquinas to win. You know, there's not, like, a central villain yeah, you know, at the beginning of this book, they introduce a guy who looks like he's going to be the central villain, but he gets killed off pretty quickly. So, the Aquinists are more like just this force, this... I guess you could call it an ideology, which, yeah, they're following an ideology, I know that, but, like, it's like they're fighting against the ideology itself rather than the followers of the ideology. And I actually thought that was really, really cool. It does... There, there's some obvious parallels between that and the real world, like, well, e even if you kill all the jihadis in the world, more of them are going to take their place, so there has to be some other way to stop all this violence. And the characters, even by the end of the book, they don't seem to have really found the answer to that. So that was... I actually thought that was really intelligent and really, really neat. I don't really have anything else to say, though. Uh, I mean, I know this was a short review, but uh, there's just not a whole lot going on here. I mean, the world was interesting. Because in a lot of ways it was just switched, but in other ways it was actually different. And even little things like fashion and technology have changed a lot from the real world to this one. And just so things that you sort of take for granted and sort of think like, yeah, this is how things would always be. You, you start to realize, okay, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the world would be a lot different if just this one small thing changed. And to me, that's what I love about alternate history. I can really only recommend this to you if you think the idea is, like, the most fascinating thing ever. Like, if you're into alternate history and you think that this one sounds okay, maybe you'll enjoy it. But if you're into, like, thrillers and stuff, this one probably doesn't have enough action for you. It doesn't have enough uh, character to it. There's just not a whole lot going on, like I said. So, overall, the book is fine and... Well, well, yeah, that's it. That's it. it. It's just fine. Please subscribe so that I don't have to eat out of the garbage anymore. I, I, I need money really badly. Please.